All right, the Cayman Cancer Society is taking a stand against gynecological cancer. The awareness campaign starts this week to inform the public and highlight the importance of early screening. Joining me now to discuss this, sitting right next to me, we have Camila Ferreira, who is the project coordinator with the Cayman Cancer Society, as well as Dr. St uh, De Saran, who is uh, a gynecologist. Good morning and welcome. Thank you both for being here with us this morning. Um, so you've got some uh, important meetings that are coming up. Um, right. The entire month is based around uh, this particular topic. So let's get into when the meetings are and then we're going to talk a little bit more about the importance of early detection and prevention. Okay. All right. So just give us some details of what's happening this month. Sure. All right. Well, good morning, Sheena. Thanks for having us on. Yes, that's right. We're going to have a series of gynecological cancers awareness meetings throughout the month and they're going to be in the dis different districts because we know sometimes it's hard for people to get out into town. And so the first meeting is actually going to be held this Thursday, the 9th, and it's going to be at the United Church in Northside, and Dr. Tomlinson from Chrissy Tomlinson will be presenting on ovarian cancer. Okay. The following Thursday, which is the 16th, we have a visiting doctor from Johns Hopkins University, mm -hmm. and she's going to be talking about HPV and related cancers, and that's going to be at Savannah Primary School. And then the Thursday after that, which is the 23rd, at, and these are all going to take place, they're going to start at 7 o'clock. At 7 o'clock, it's going to be in town at St. George's Anglican Church, and Dr. Richter will be presenting on cervical cancer. And then the last Thursday of the month, Dr. D here is going to be presenting on endometrial cancer at the John A. Cumber Primary School in West Bay. Okay. Now, Dr. D. Saran, the importance you think of, of women coming out to these individual screening or meetings, should I say, um, to learn more about uh, early detection. It's, it's paramount. Um, every year the Cancer Society does this. Um, it helps them to understand what, what these cancers are mm -hmm. and let them know that you can, you can get screened, the protocol for screening, and the Cancer Society also gives off um, free vultures so the patient, the, the patient can come into each healthcare facility and have it done. Um, what we find is that cervical cancer, now there's a decrease in the incident of cervical cancer. In the U.S. it has gone down by 50 percent, about 6.5 per 100,000 clients. And in Jamaica it's 45 per 100,000. We don't have true data for, for um, Cayman for mm -hmm. on these Not cancers. yet. Not yet. Working on it though, yeah. right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, but as women, in, in, in our jurisdiction we're finding that less incident in the office. In my six years in private practice I've seen one cervical cancer patient. Mm -hmm. um, but we do see a lot of the precursor you know, the dysplastic changes of the cervix and the warts um, that we would see from the HPV um, virus. Mm -hmm. So again, prevention. But in, in, what is in our society, we're seeing less incident um, because of a greater detection rate, because of the work by the Cancer Society and mm -hmm. perhaps the HSA with their healthcare drives also, um, to decrease the incident. Now they say that women should start uh, doing uh, PAPS, uh, PAPS uh, test uh, at the age of, or should I say, not, not really an age, but once they start having sex. And how often, I mean, am I correct in saying that? And how often should they do these tests um, to check, you know, to check themselves? Well, there's a new protocol which came out in August 28, 2010 from the American College of Ups and Gynae, which mm -hmm. is a leading um, body that recommend it should be done once the patient is sexually active um, by the age of 21 mm -hmm. and with three consecutive normal pap smear they can revert to once every two years and the patient over the age of 30 they can go every three years okay um, but there's a category of, of patients that would need frequent testing the patient who are immune compromised from steroid use organ transplant and HIV and AIDS, mm -hmm. where they will have their pap smear every six months for the first year and yearly thereafter. Um, in the case where a patient have dysplastic changes on the cervix, we find that based on the grade of the precancerous lesion, they, will, they may have pap smears every four months for the first year, every six months for the next year, and yearly thereafter. 
Okay, and this is just a brief information that you know individuals will be able to learn when they come to exactly. these mm -hmm. different meetings, mm -hmm. um, as well as receiving uh, the free uh, Paps test uh, that they'll be able to get as well. All right, let's just go through real quickly. I know that you have one that's coming out. We want to give all the details for the one that's sure. coming out, and then for the other ones, for people to get information, uh, do they contact the Cancer Society? They can contact the Cancer Society. That's right. So just a reminder: this week, Thursday, at seven o'clock in Northside, that's going to be at the United Church. Dr. Tomlinson from the Christy Tomlinson Memorial Hospital will be speaking about ovarian cancer. All right. And we will be t distributing vouchers to eligible women and refreshments will be served. All right. Well, once again, thank you both for being here this thank morning. You. Thank you for the Cancer Society for taking on this role in our community and making sure uh, that our women are well educated when it comes uh, to ovarian cancer as well. So thank you both for being here. Appreciate it.